In terms of how much history does corporate governance have, there's two different ways of looking at it. In terms of uh, how long there have been publicly traded companies where there have been directors in charge with shareholders who want to know how they're performing, you can cast your mind back three, four hundred years. Uh, however, the idea of um, managers being accountable to shareholders and having that dealt with through the terminology of corporate governance is a much more recent development. This began in the 1970s in the United States. Corporate governance has changed a lot. Um, in the United States, um, what you have is um, the most notable change occurred with the Sarbanes-Oxley legislation of 2002, but what you'd seen is radical changes in market practice preceding that. In the UK, um, the departure point was the 1992 Cadbury report and the introduction of the Code of Best Practice uh, following on from that that was a, uh, an appendix to the listing rules of the London Stock Exchange. And then there have been a series of reports since that time um, and numerous revisions of the underlying code relating to corporate governance you can consider the Cadbury Code from a domestic perspective. What impact has it had on UK corporate governance? And what you will see is that boards and relations between um, shareholders and boards have changed substantially since the early 1990s. This may well have occurred in large part simple, through simple market developments. However, what the Cadbury Code and the and the subsequent versions of the code have done have shaped the way in which these changes have occurred in many significant ways and has also led debate. For instance, um, the market probably was not ready in the early 2000s for the split between the role of the chairman and the CEO to the extent that the, the codes, driven primarily by the 2003 Higgs report, indicated in this situation it was very much a leader. From an international perspective, the Cadbury Code has been also very significant. Prior to the uh, Cadbury Code of 1992, the idea of using codes to deal with corporate governance was hardly known at all. And what happened was that the Cadbury Code became the departure point for the use of the code regime as a way of dealing with corporate governance problems, now extending to somewhere around 80 or 90 countries have some form of corporate governance code. One level at which it could be extended would be at the European level. Um, there's a schizophrenic approach at the European level with respect to a corporate governance codes. There's unease with the use of the complier explained system. There's a tendency uh, at the EU level to think that you have to have mandatory rules. But there is recognition that um, flexibility is necessary because of the substantial diversity of publicly traded companies. And correspondingly, I anticipate that there would be thinking at, in Brussels, perhaps they could think about an EU corporate governance code. That would be an obvious way forward. The other way forward would be for additional countries. As um, institutional investors want to buy shares in their companies, they will adopt codes. I would tend to agree that it is hard to, uh, hard to see that there would be a logic in a European Union level code because of the tremendous diversity of, of publicly traded companies in a continent like Europe with a, with a variety of models of capitalism existing at national levels. It would be difficult to have an overarching code that could deal with all issues satisfactorily. However, um, there already has been at the European Union level uh, intervention in corporate governance, for instance, essentially now by virtue of um, uh, European Union directives. Audit committees on boards are essentially mandatory in publicly traded companies. Um, and it's possible that you could see that sort of approach extended to other issues. How much has changed from a legal perspective since the Cadbury Code was introduced? Well, if you're talking purely in terms of legislation, statute, the, the largest change was the enactment of the Companies Act 2006, which uh, was an overhaul of UK um, companies legislation. A notable feature here is, though, that corporate governance was not really dealt with to any substantial degree, degree at least directly. There were changes that were very important for corporate governance, such as a codification of directors' duties. But there was no attempt to deal with board structure, for instance. This territory was 
left to the UK Corporate Governance Code. Another major change that occurred in 2000 was that um, the listing rules, which had formerly been a contractual arrangement between companies and the London Stock Exchange were given formal uh, statutory underpinning, um, which meant that what had been a pretty self-regulatory regime regarding many aspects of publicly traded companies suddenly had a much firmer legal foundation.